GitHub Copilot is now available in SSMS in preview. Learn all about how easy it is to get started and what you might want to do with it and what's next this week on Data Exposed. Hey, welcome back. We are here and I am here with Aaron Stellato from the SMS Copilot team, uh, leading a lot of our Copilot efforts actually across the organization. Uh, but today we're talking about GitHub Copilot in SSMS. And yes, you heard that right. Uh, Aaron, how do we get here? It's It's been a, a good journey. So we started with the Copilot in SSMS uh, public preview that we released in May with SSMS 21 GA. And one of the first feedbacks we got was, hey, why doesn't this work with GitHub Copilot? Which was fair. There's a long story there. Uh, the short story ends up being that we listened to customer feedback. We did a survey and we made the decision uh, late in the summer to pivot to the GitHub Copilot integration. So this is what I'm gonna talk about today is specific to SSMS 22, which is currently in preview, uh, but that is where GitHub Copilot, the integration is going to land. Cool, awesome. I mean, I think let's get right into it. Um, how do yeah. I sign up for GitHub Copilot in SSMS? So when you come in to, actually, let me just close this so that if you were in SSMS 22 preview, uh, you'll notice that up here in the top right, we've got a GitHub badge now. So if we click on that, you get the familiar GitHub Copilot window, the chat window. And if you go ahead and say, sign in, uh, you're going to get, I will bring this over here. You're going to get the sign in window, which I'll go ahead and select. And then once I say open, we'll hop back into SSMS and this will authenticate and I will be ready to go. So for folks who uh, had used a Copilot in SSMS, sometimes the Azure OpenAI integration was a bit of a, a step. Uh, this makes it a lot easier to hop right into chat. Awesome. I love it. And that green means I've signed in and good to go, I guess. So now what does this Copilot have access to? What's it talking to? So exactly like before, it has context about the database that you're connected to. So if I just hop in here, what version of SQL is this? Right Within the editor, I'm connected to my Wide World Importers database on my SQL 22 instance, which is local. Uh, to my machine. I need to update to, to uh, 2025. But it will, uh, as before, uh, access the database in a read-only state and pull that information, and it knows that it's connected to SQL 2022. Nice. Awesome. Easy enough. Yeah. Okay. So what sorts of things are people, or do you think people will do with this? So I know that a lot of folks want to write T-SQL, and I want to show how to do that. But as a reminder, you also just have this chat. So chat with your database can be talk to my database about the objects within it, but also help me understand things about this database. So I'm just asking like what the largest table is. And it says, hey, it's cold room temperatures archive with 17 million rows. But I could ask things like, what are the list of the 10 largest tables? Or I could say, what's the compat mode? Or how do I enable uh, always encrypted, right? So that chat window is for any data question or administrative question that you have. Nice. Awesome. I love it. Okay. And then I see this like plus button. What's this plus button? So the plus button is related to, am I using the active document or the active editor window or not? And by default, you always are. Uh, you can turn that off, but I recommend having it enabled because typically you're interacting with that window. So I just dropped in a prompt that said, give me a query that joins all of these tables, uh, pretty simple, straightforward T-SQL. But it's going to go ahead and again, because it has database context behind the scenes, it can look at the schema of the database and it understands that I have an orders table, a customer's table, an order lines table, right? So it's not just guessing or using heuristics, it's actually querying the system metadata. And then I can go ahead and say apply to this query and that hops right into the oh. editor window and then I can go ahead and accept that right within the context of this. And now I have this within my editor window. I could run it, but just for fun, if I did a little change to this, I'm going to do a top 100 star, which will not run right because it has an intact, incorrect syntax. I have fix capabilities. So if I do forward slash fix, then it says fix the code. If I go ahead and have it run that, now it's taking the code that's in the editor sending it to say, fix this code because there's an issue with it. And it's going to come back with a fixed query. 
and it will tell me what it did as well, right? Like you did a stray select star. So if I wanna just address this, I can just go ahead and say apply. And again, it's gonna do that right within the window. I can tab to accept that and then run that query. And it's gone through and I'm right editing my T-SQL, fixing it between the editor and the chat window. Nice, awesome. So there you use something, I think it's called a slash command. Mm -hmm. uh, for folks who don't know, like what is that? And are there other slash commands? There are other slash commands. Um, some of these will kind of be shifting over time, but there's a fix, there's a document, there's explain, and then there's an optimize, which would be like a, a refactor. Uh, so you can do all of those from the slash commands. Uh, and then we'll be uh, continuing to evolve this integration. So we had to get back to, or we're still getting back to parity with what we had in the original Copilot in SSMS. Uh, so there may be some things that folks have seen there that they don't see yet. Hold tight, right? This is a preview. We have a lot of work to do. And again, the great thing about preview is that it gives folks time to give us feedback. So that feedback site, SSMS-feedback, or the AKA MS SSMS-feedback, we want to hear uh, from folks what uh, they want to see with this integration. Awesome. Cool. Anything else you want to show us or any like tips and tricks or best practices? Uh, the best practices still are the same, right? Like the, the more refined your question is, the better in terms of a response that you're going to get. And uh, I've said this before, but, you know, don't treat that chat window like a, um, uh, a results grid, right? Like if I say uh, list every table in the database, like this database, Wide World Importers, isn't too bad. But I know some folks out there have databases with thousands of tables. And we don't really want thousands of tables to be streaming within the, the chat window. Um, so just something to pay attention to uh, when folks are asking their questions. All right. So here it's going to go and it's going it, to it lists them all. But this isn't in a way to me that's like readable or helpful. Right. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, cool. So folks can just go get the latest version of SMS preview, depending on where, when they're watching this episode, I, I can't say, yeah. um, and, and they get started. Is there anything else they need to know? No, they just, they need uh, their GitHub Copilot license. And if they don't have one, there is a um, Copilot free uh, that they can use. So if their organization doesn't have that, they can get a free license uh, to try out and use GitHub Copilot in SMS as well. Okay, my last question, and maybe you're not going to be able to tell us, but I have yeah. to ask. Yeah. What is on the roadmap for GitHub Copilot in this? That's a great question. So folks who've been using GitHub Copilot in Visual Studio or VS Code will notice that right now, right now, we don't have inline completions or, or autocomplete within the editor. Um, and that's because we want to make sure that we have a really good integration there. And so if folks are trying to do that, it's not going to work. That's expected, but that's coming. That's something that I know folks want to be able to do. Uh, but there's a lot of um, nuance to making that work and work well. Um, so that's coming. I also know that a lot of folks have said, hey, right, we've got specific information about our database, um, mm -hmm. about our business, right, that we want Copilot to know about. Um, so we're working on what options we have for that. Oh, awesome. Seems like a, a lot of exciting things in the pipeline. Yeah. Aaron, thanks so much for coming. I learned a lot. I'm super psyched to go try this out myself. Uh, to our viewers, if you like this episode, go ahead, give it a like, leave us a comment, let us know what you think. We'll put some links in the description for you to learn more, maybe a peek at the roadmap. I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> and uh, please just go try this out and let us know what your feedback is so we can make it better uh, and, and stay tuned for more. We hope to see you next time on Data Exposed. Mm -hmm.